my channel, so I'm filming on this on the 1st of May. May is both my favorite and craziest month. We have my birthday, my husband's birthday, my father's birthday, and Mother's Day all before May 15th. <laughs> So it is crazy for me, but I love May weather, more so up north. It's getting kind of hot here in Florida. But anyways, I'm excited for the new month. And this was, um, well, this is a monthly favorites, right? But for the first time in two, almost three years, I skipped a month. I did not film a March favorites video because I was traveling. So this is a lot of products. I'm not featuring any of my favorites from the Sephora sale in this month because it would just be too long, but anything that I tried before the Sephora sale, these are my favorites. Let's go ahead and get into it. I'm actually going to start off with some non-makeup favorites first, starting with my nails because I get a lot of questions on my nails now. Now, if you've been around for a while, you know for the longest time I had the most disgusting nails. I just did not like getting them done. I didn't like going. I didn't like sitting at the nail salon. And my nails don't hold any paint, acrylics, gel. So I just didn't spend any time on my nails. And then I moved here. I was closer to a nail salon, so I got gels. But I still hated it. I hated going to the nail salon every two weeks. And even though I'd get them professionally done, the gel would still peel on me. I don't know what's wrong with my nails. So lately, I've been using freaking press-on nails, and it's the best thing that's happened to me. So if you hate going to the nail salon, you want to save money, and even if like nail stuff doesn't last on your nails, you've got to try this method. Not only are press-on nails cheaper, and they save me time, but they last longer on me. I've been wearing these for over two weeks. No pair of acrylics would ever last me over two weeks, so <laughs> I love these. So here is what you need to get started into press-on nails. First of all, to prep the nail, you need the nail as dry, like bone dry as possible. I'll link these, these are all from Amazon. This is the Mia Secret Nail Prep pH Balance Dehydrator. You need a nail dehydrator before putting your nails on. This sucks them dry, which is gonna make them last longer. Then, the glue is key, because the first time I put on press on nails, they were falling off every single day. <laughs> because I was using the glue that came with the actual nail product. Don't do that, just go to Amazon, pick up this glue, again, I will link it, and your nails will last forever. I am telling you, like I said, over two weeks. Now, I did have a couple nails pop off, but I was building furniture, so I think that's a valid reason for them to pop off. The beauty in press-on nails is if one or two pops off, you can just pop them back on and then they're good as new and then they're gonna stay for a couple more <laughs> weeks so even if a couple pop off you do have the freedom of just reapplying them and they're good as new whereas you know if you got acrylics on you'd have to go all the way to the nail salon so for me my lifestyle press on nails have been the way to go um, my favorite brand I think I'm still testing a lot of brands I have on Ardell right now now keep in mind I've had these on for a couple weeks like this nail has grown out like crazy but look how pretty these are these are from Ardell pretty good quality I haven't had any break Glamnetic is the thickest nail but it also is the most expensive it's like 15 to 20 dollars but it is worth it if you compare it to the prices of getting your nails professionally done I've also done Lottie London which is thinner but they have beautiful designs so so far I'm liking the Ardell and Glamnetic the most but I'm still testing so I'll keep you guys updated on the journey but yes I had to put these first because press-on nails have been probably the newest and most game-changing discovery in my beauty routine overall. I have never had nails like this. I just couldn't pay the prices for acrylics because I knew they were gonna come off and I hate when they peel up and get stuck in my hair. That doesn't happen with these. Biggest game changer. This is why my nails always look good now. Press on nails. And by the way, I have very tiny nail beds, which is why I stayed away from press on nails before because I was like, they're never gonna fit me. And they don't. But then I have this aha moment where I was like, I could literally just file down the nail to fit my nail beds. So, you know, I do have to do some reshaping of the nails to get them to fit, but totally 100% worth it. And I get to wash my shows while sitting at my table shaping my nails. <laughs> okay, I've talked enough about that. I just had to get that long spiel in. A couple hair products that I've been really into. So, you guys know I moved. I have my own bathroom. So, I had a lot of my beauty products just kind of sitting in boxes 
and I didn't really see them. They weren't in my vision, but now all of my products are beautifully spread out. So I've been putting extra time into my skincare and my hair care. And my hair has been so much healthier lately because of these Briogeo products that I've been using. So two products, the Briogeo Scalp Revival and then the Briogeo Don't Despair Repair Deep Conditioning Mask. So I don't know what happened. Got rid of my dandruff. I had it for like months. It came back recently. I was very upset about it. Uh, so I pulled this out from Briogeo. It's a charcoal and coconut oil micro exfoliating shampoo. This scalp revival is made for your scalp health. It helps with dandruff. And guys, we are back in business and I definitely attribute it to this so if you struggle with scalp dandruff coming on and off put this in your routine once maybe twice a week i mean this really really helped i did use a couple other things but this was the newest addition that i i believe really helped my scalp and i'm going to continue using it just for maintenance to keep my scalp flake free also you see like my i feel like my hair has been shinier i've just been taking better care of it I think it's this deep conditioning mask. It's really good. My hair has been really shiny. It feels really lightweight. So the hair products that I've been using lately that I feel like have stepped up my hair game are Briogeo. And I, I actually did a sponsorship with these because they are fantastic. And then I put them away. We moved. Things got crazy. Pulled these back out. Huh. Amazing. Next. Okay, we're into makeup now. I just had to share those like brand new game-changing products that have been into my routine. Starting off with primer, I have this from Say. I've talked about this a lot. This is the Glowy Super Gel in the shade Star Glow. This is my new favorite everyday glowy primer. It's a bit much on its own. Like I feel like you do need to have product over top, but it is not too intense of a glowy base. It's really lightweight. It doesn't feel too heavy on the skin. It brightens up the face. You can put it over makeup, underneath makeup. I prefer it as a primer because it does have hydrating qualities. Amazing. This is probably my new favorite glowy base. I would argue. Like, I think I like this better than Charlotte Tilbury. It's different than Charlotte Tilbury. But if I'm going for a glowy base, this is going to be the primer that I use. So I love this. I highly recommend it. It's very lightweight on the skin. One of my new favorite discoveries, I am now all of a sudden obsessed with Say Beauty products, and it begins there. That's my favorite product they've launched. Also, kind of on the more affordable scale, this has been well-loved over the last couple of months. This is an affordable option from Hard Candy. This is a Sheer Glow Serum Primer. It is a beautiful, illuminating primer. It's a different type of illumination from the Say. It's a little bit more metallic. It also has more of a serum feel, so it is a little heavy, so my advice to you is to make sure Less is more because when I do over apply this, if the layer is a little too heavy, I do find that my makeup can look oily pretty fast. But if I am controlled with the amount that I use, this is the most beautiful and hydrating. It feels like literal skincare hydrating glowy primer that I've ever used from the drugstore. It's the best. So if there's one drugstore glowy primer you need to try, I definitely recommend this one. It's very affordable. I would say I prefer the Say. <laughs> but this one is also very beautiful. I was loving this. This was my number one before this I came into my life, but both are great. And they're both very different price points. Foundation. I've tried a lot of new foundations lately. You know a ton have come out. But this one is the one that I keep going back to. It's from Laura Mercier. This is the Real Flawless Weightless Perfecting Foundation. I have not heard enough just hit myself in the face. I have not heard enough people talking about this foundation. I find it to be relatively full coverage. I would say in the medium high part of coverage, but not quite full, but it lasts all day. I feel like my skin looks perfected all day. I don't have to worry that it's going to break down and be unflattering of all the new foundations that have launched. This one longevity wise is the best. I would say it's not the most skin-like finish, but I totally get over it because of how well it wears and how good my skin looks at the end of the day. So this one, I think Laura Mercier really did it. I love the packaging of it. Definitely of all the new foundations, this is the one that I've been reaching for the most. I also have been, oh gosh, dropping these. So I've been reaching for these a lot from e.l.f. These are the camo color correctors. I've had so much fun with these, let me tell you. They're so versatile. 
I'll mix these in with my foundations to change the tone. I'll mix these in with my concealers to change the tone. I will color correct these with what, you know, this, that's how they're intended to be used. These are such a creamy, lightweight formula. I don't find that they disrupt the consistency of the products that I'm mixing them in with. Today I use the green because I have a big red zit on my face. I use the peach for the under eyes. If I need to warm up a foundation, I'll use the orange. If I need to cool down a foundation, I'll use the blue. The yellow is also good for color correcting. So I found like all of these shades to be very, very useful. So if you are into really perfecting the tone of something or you're a beginner into color corrector, these are a really great set to have, especially since they're very affordable. Next up, concealer. If you're looking for a good everyday lightweight concealer, this one from Physicians Formula, fantastic. This is the Butter Glow Concealer. I just feel it, it's like watery, but in a good way. It's very hydrating on the under eyes. It has a nice illumination to it. It feels really lightweight. It's going to give a light coverage. But why I'm recommending this is because it's one of the most unique concealers at the drugstore. Let me just say this. There's a lot of different concealers at the drugstore. Not many are able to achieve a beautiful illumination like this. This is one of the few good illuminating concealers. There was a concealer from First Aid Beauty that I used in my bridal kit on mature skin. They discontinued it. I was depressed about it. This is the closest thing I can find to that First Aid Beauty concealer. So this is phenomenal for mature skin. So if I were still an active working makeup artist, these would be in my makeup kit for my mature clients. And then another concealer I've been loving from Glossy A. It's this Dang Stretch Concealer. Another great one for mature skin. It's less glowy, gives a little bit more coverage compared to the Physician's Formula. Just something to add if you do have mature skin. Sorry, <laughs> the Physicians Formula is really great to mix with other concealers that you have. So if you have a concealer that looks too heavy or drying on the under eyes, mix a little bit of this in. Just wanted to give you that tip. But <laughs> this one is also really great. It blends like butter into the skin. It's great for spot concealing. It's great for just not putting all over the face, but for, you know, putting it in the spots that you need it for a quick everyday look without having too much full heavy coverage on. And I just like the way that it blends into the skin. They did a great job with this concealer. I am a Glossier fan now, and I also feel like... How do I feel? Anyways, the stretch concealer is the perfect name for this. It really does like stretch over the skin. It's beautiful. Now, a liquid bronzer that I was using a ton because I've actually been more into cream products. I've always liked cream products, but I am a powder girl through and through. But I've been doing lighter makeup recently and I didn't want powder to disrupt that, so I've been doing a lot of cream stuff. And this Physicians Formula Butter Glow Liquid Bronzer, so these new Butter Glow products that they've come out with, I love. Now, this is a bronzy shade. It's not cool at all. It's very, very warm. So sometimes I'll mix it with something a little bit more deep and also a little bit more cool. But I just love this for a quick bronze around the outskirts of the face. It's a really nice lightweight formula. There is an illumination to it, but it still is really beautiful. The tone is probably not my preference for this, but I find it gets the job done. It feels super lightweight on the skin, and I think they did a great job with the formula. This is not in my favorites because I don't like liquid luminizers that much, but they did also launch a liquid highlighter, which is very, very good. I'm just not a fan of that like style of product, but I love this. We'll continue with the creams. I have this from Bobbi Brown. Good old Bobbi Brown. This is the Pot Rouge for lip and cheeks in the shade Powder Pink. I love this. This almost is like a lipstick for the cheeks, but it blends so nicely over the cheeks because sometimes, you know, when you apply lipstick to the cheeks, which is totally allowed and fine, you gotta press a little hard to get it to blend out. This is just a little bit more malleable. So I like that it has that really smooth, creamy lipstick feel to it but it's super malleable over the skin and this color is perfect. Again, for that everyday quick five minute makeup look where I'm using really minimal product, I'll use this because this formula is just so creamy. I'm gonna have to do a tutorial on my quick everyday makeup because I, I'm so sweaty out here <laughs> in the humidity that I have been wearing a lot less makeup. So this has been perfect for that. And then the best, maybe not the best, cream highlighter I've ever used, but 
definitely up there. So much so that I've actually been using a cream highlight. This is from About Face. These are called the Light Luxe Sticks. This particular shade is Greek Tragedy. I would say in terms of cream highlights, this is the best one I've ever tried. There's some like good ones that, you know, are competitive with this, but this is the best stick highlight I've ever used. So creamy. It goes very well over any foundation. I don't notice any picking up or moving around. It also is so good that it goes well over powder. Now my trick to applying this is you definitely need to use your finger to warm it up. But again, for those light makeup days, I've been loving this, but I'll even use this on a regular powder makeup day. I really like it. About Face has managed, in my opinion, to create the best cream highlighter I've ever tried. I've never heard anybody talk about this, but About Face. Get it, girl. Halsey. Oh, side note. Halsey is so beautiful. I was watching like a music video that she was in the other day. She has the most pretty face. Just stunning. I have a powder bronzer. I think you already know where I'm going with this. The Pat McGrath Labs powder bronzers. My favorite shade is Nude Honey. It's a little bit more cool. I also have Bronze Dawn, which is a little bit more warm, but Nude Honey is a little bit more my jam. This is such a nice formula. I already said it, I'll say it again. If you don't wanna spend the money on the bronzer, don't worry. There are definitely affordable alternatives that you will be just as happy with. However, she still came out with such a good formula that I have continue to reach for this. It's not too powdery, so it's not too messy. It doesn't apply too much product. It also doesn't apply too little. It's just that perfect amount. If you use it with the right brush, you can get a super swift, easy, and quick application with this bronzer because you don't need to mess about with it. It goes in, it gets the job done, it applies it where you want, how much you want, it blends out with ease. So for a quick and dirty bronzer, this has been so easy to work with. And you know, there's a lot of bronzers that I'll put up with that I say are very good, but you know, might require a little bit of extra elbow grease, a little extra twist of the wrist to get the product to be blended out to my preference. This is one where it does most of the work for me, so that is kind of priceless. Kind of. <laughs> Eyes. I also have a very big eyeshadow rankings video coming in the next few days. I'm gonna go with the two that I've been wearing the most. I don't necessarily want to say that these are my top two favorites because I have not yet begun the actual rankings, but in terms of numbers of use, these are the two that I've been wearing the most. We'll start off with this one on the eyes. I go for pink a lot, even though I say I don't like pink, but it's spring, well, it's my first. I had to do a pink look. This is such a shocker. This is so random, but I've been reaching for this Too Faced Pinker Times Ahead palette so much. And I know the Italian Spritz just launched, and everybody's loving it. I like this better than the Italian Spritz one. It's so tiny and compact. The one flaw to this, I will say, is that it doesn't give me the exact depth level that I want, but it still is stinking amazing. Before today's look, I used this pink right here for my transition color. This was a transition color. And then I went into this lilac shade and I just kind of put it on the inner half of my crease and blended that. And then for the depth, this is the only option for depth, which kind of sucks, <laughs> but I did use this in the outer corner of my eye look as well as on the outer part of the lower lash line. And then for the lid, this this is not the best quality shade, but if you apply it with a finger, it's fine. This very light purple inner half of the eyelid. And then I used this shade right here for the inner corner and underneath the brow. And I just got a really nice, pretty spring look. You do have other options here. I found that with simple spring bright looks, I've really been reaching for this a lot. They were trying to get rid of it. That's the funny part. It was on major sale on HSN that I got this. I, they did send it to me, but still, that's how I picked it up. But I love it. It's so nice, and I can't tell you the last time I've mentioned Too Faced in my videos in terms of eyeshadows. And then the other one is from Huda Beauty. It's the Matte Cool Obsessions in the shade, well, it's the shade Cool Obsessions. I'm losing my mind here. This, I mean, it's a mauve palette. It's purpley. Of course, I'm gonna love it. And this, along with the warm one, the quality on them are fantastic both of them so they really hit the mark with that and I like using this and then having the ability to dig into my individual shimmer drawer to give those some love and I just love purple looks I'll show you a look on screen right now they blend beautifully this color story is my jam so I use it a lot 
eyeliner. Another top runner from Glossier is the Pro Tip Liquid Eyeliner. Talk about precision. This is one of the most precise liquid liners I've ever used. They're great for mini, mini wings, super thin lines. I didn't go super thin today, but you can see it's quite black. It doesn't smudge. It doesn't give raccoon eyes. So if you're looking for a nice, high quality, very precise liquid liner, this one is great. It has a brush tip applicator, and I definitely recommend it if you like the thinnest of thinnest or smallest of smallest wings. This one will get you there. Very easy to use. Mascaras, I have two. The first one is from Fenty Beauty. This is the Hella Thick Mascara. Now, you guys know I don't work with much lashes. They're quite thin, they're quite short, they're quite sparse. So some of you have told me this gets clumpy on you. That's not the case with me because I don't have much to clump up, I would say. Well, I'm trying to show you, but I actually have falsies on. But in the demo, I really find that this does thicken up my lashes with just one simple coat. So if I just need a little bit of oomph and I'm running low on time, this is the mascara that I go for. So if you're looking for thickness, hella thick from Fenty Beauty will give it to you. The marketing is not only marketing, it's the truth. It really makes my lashes very thick. And then the other mascara that I've been loving is from e.l.f. Surprisingly, this is a Lash and Roll mascara. I was not thinking much when I tried it. They did send it to me in PR. However, this gives my lashes a lot of lift and a lot of separation. The bristles just really separate and brush through the individual eyelashes, which is great because it makes me look like I have a little bit more eyelashes than I actually do. So something affordable, separating, lifting, the e.l.f. one is the way to go. These two are quite the opposite, but they're both great. And then finally, lips, two products. I've talked about this a lot, so I'm gonna skip through, but I've been using these nonstop from Lawless. They're the tinted lip balms. They're just the quickest, easiest, pop of color to throw onto the lips. You can have a lip liner underneath. You can have nothing underneath. This can be the only thing on your lips. Extremely hydrating, doesn't give too much color. So it's great if you're wearing minimal makeup. My favorite shade is Georgie. It's kind of like a my lips, but much better color. And so it's just something really hydrating to keep in your purse. And given that it's a tinted lip balm, I'll say that it lasts a relatively long time. The last product was so good that it deserved its own dedicated short on my channel. This is from Clarence. I was so in love with this that I turned on my phone and I was on vacation, literally in a hotel bathroom and I was like, you guys need to try this. It gives an instant transformation to the lips. I'm late on this. This has been around for a while, but this is the Clarins Comfort Oil in the shade Patea. I like Patea. Raspberry also gives similar effect. This makes me have the juiciest, glassiest lips that I've ever had. I like the shade because it's sheer, but it does kind of add a little bit of color to the lips. It smells amazing. It's not the longest lasting, but I am happy to apply it every minute of the day because it's so beautiful. It feels so beautiful on the lips. And I mean, it, it plumps them. You've got to check out that short. You'll see the instant transformation on these little lips. So for color recommendation, I like Patea and I like raspberry because they give kind of a stained look to the lips, which I think looks really, really nice. So that was a very long favorite. I do apologize, <laughs> but it's a double favorites month, pretty much. These are what I've been loving the last two months. So I'll have everything that I linked down below. Share your favorites down below. Also, I love it when you guys give me your opinions on products that I mentioned. So if you like it or you don't like it, tell me why down below. I do like to mention that in my videos, like for example, some of you guys didn't like this. I was happy to share that because other people have different experiences. So oh, I'm out of breath. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it helpful. If you haven't liked it yet, make sure you do subscribe to my channel and I'll catch you guys in the next one very, very soon. I'll be ranking all of the palettes that I tried in the last couple of months. So keep an eye out for that. Peace out.